There's a, there is a myriad of CPD options out there. This great world of professional development, the resources that could come in from online courses, from short, uh, the short free courses to the more expensive or expensive, slightly longer ones, the wealth of reading materials, the wealth of frameworks that we can pull in, uh, what you can learn from observations, what you can learn from going to events like these, to conferences. There is a lot out there, a lot to follow, and it can be a lot to absorb and a lot to actually put into practice. You can, you can lose sight of things. And the challenge here was taking all of these notes and ideas um, and putting them into practice, implementing them. It is something easy, something off the shelf that's applicable and relevant to teachers. Summarizing that, that can be picked up and go with. And CPD, as you know, the, the, the buzzword here is it's opt in. Uh, our, our emphasis was not on the opt, but on the in, and to take that opt and make it as small as possible, and therefore make it as easy as possible. Let's start with a quick little story about the, the background to this talk. Um, we started a, a project in Atlantic uh, in January uh, to update our CPD program, to make it more relevant, to make it more applicable, and to make it more pick up and go for our teachers. Um, this event came about as a nice kind of a natural deadline to force us to do it, and to, this is kind of a launch day, if you like. Um, in a moment of blissful naivety, I, I volunteered to do the talk, uh, <laughs> which led to a cycle of two months of Peter chasing me for information. It started with the, the bio, which uh, two weeks after the deadline I saw him at a conference, I was sitting behind him. I wrote down the bio with my notes and threw it at his head. And it wasn't the most digital way of sharing it, but it got there. Uh, this continued on with, with, with Laura with the slides. Mm -hmm. Since the soft deadline, then the hard deadline was Thursday. <laughs> when I started talk, really thinking about the content, and then she, yesterday she came back to me, and then I started really thinking about the content. <laughs> and uh, then on, on the way up here, I started really putting together. Um, so what, what was the hard part to think of here was um, I spoke to Peter a couple of months ago about how to frame this talk and, and what he wanted from it. His very sage advice was uh, have a narrative. And uh, the narrative was the tricky part to, to come up with and just to succinctly represent. And, uh, I did have a couple of ideas on this narrative, which I'll go into now. This was the first narrative idea. Uh, any takers? Any ideas about that really complicated visual puzzle is? Don't like technology? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nailing it, yeah. This was my first narrative idea. We nailed it. Uh, we, th we went away and we studied a lot and we thought about CPD, we tried everything, we tested everything, and we were experts. And here are five things to do to make CPD engaging and relevant for all of your teachers. Copy, paste, go. That was one option. Uh, this isn't it. We have only just picked up the hammer. We have not nailed it in any form. We probably will nail it, but we haven't yet. And I want to emphasize that point. So that is not there. <coughs> the next one is this one. <laughs> uh, we've all been to talks. I stress not today. We've all been to talks where maybe the speaker is not presenting that much content, but they are extracting uh, content from the audience and from the the talent, and yes, I am calling you the talent, you know you like um, Extracting these ideas from, as a purpose of your talk, and bringing these ideas back as opposed to actually presenting something. That was a, an idea, which I thought about, but I couldn't think of a good acronym. <laughs> a nice adjective, how I perceive these talks sometimes. So, if anyone has any ideas or an acronym, please do shout. <laughs> Uh, third idea I had was this word I invented, uh, or I thought I'd invented, called justificationism. Where, um, I googled this actually just to make sure it didn't mean anything nasty. Uh, there are quite a lot of search results, most of them have nothing to do with Nazis. <laughs> it's uh, what I thought I'd invented. And justificationism is the type of talk where you've done a lot of research, a lot of data, and your manager has said you must do a presentation on it, or you need to justify the funding you got, or you need to make sure you get the next round of funding. And that's not going on, it's only going on a little bit. So that's also my narrative. And finally, um, I had to get Hobbes in here because he's my hero. Uh, the idea of the sage on the stage holding forth and opining and, and the riddle, uh, the conundrum of, uh, of CPD and just to be, you know, having one of those microphones and being an excellent public speaker and solving the puzzle for everyone. Because let's face it, this, as an industry, I think we probably are prone to overthinking things uh, sometimes. Um, I think that's uh, and, uh, it, it, but it's sometimes necessary because it's a funny uh, training cycle we're in, in that it's so backloaded. The learning curve, most people's learning doesn't happen in the initial course they do to become a, a, an English language teacher or a language teacher, is, which is quite short and complex. It happens later. Most of the learning happens in the middle of the career. Hence, we only need to think about development a lot more. And it's not an option. It's because not doing professional development leads to status. It's a direct 
co a correlation, in, in my opinion. And the staleness is there if the CPD isn't there, if the CPD isn't pursued, which is why we all want things like that. Okay, so I went back, in terms of the narrative, I went back um, to kind of startup days and you know those Dragon's Den type pitches, they love when you present a problem and everyone goes, oh yeah, yeah, that's one of the real problems, they expect you to provide a solution. So I uh, tried to articulate the problem. I showed you this earlier, this is a selection of my own uh, CPD folder uh, emptied out on the desk. Uh, what I didn't mention is that um, this was from an event two months ago, this was from an event three months ago. I think I've kept the logos out here as well, you might recognize them. This is from an event a year ago, this is from an event uh, six months ago. Point being, um, I went to the, these events, I gathered up all of these ideas, part of my own CPD, came back and got swamped because I'd been a couple of days out of the office, there was so much to catch up on, the same thing if I were teaching, my students would be swamped to see me, I would similarly be swamped. Um, you don't get it, it changes around from something new and exciting, an idea, and it becomes something more of a luxury, that you don't necessarily have time to do. And this is the problem, and this led me to come up with my narrative finally, and this is the point, if you like. Again, with the was any ideas? No. Superheroes? Super. <laughs> Helps if you say it in the West of Ireland accent. <laughs> Forget about fancy dip Action points. Action points. Uh. <laughs> this is the focus. This is the idea. Making CPD action. And I know it's one of those horrible buzzwords. It's like going forward. It's a very hard thing not to say because it doesn't mean a lot. But action mm -hmm. points. Making CPD action points. And taking, take, act, take, and taking action points to bring back and to put them into practice. Okay. First though, um, I like bullet points, I find them easy, too stressy. Uh, anyone here from Atlantic will vouch for my, uh, my editor. Um, we broke it up into four areas. We tried to categorize and make four basic chapters, if you like, of CPD, which we're articulating in our updated program, Program Observation, it says Action Research, and teamwork. A whole host of other things, uh, flip between and interlink these different areas and contribute to them, which are these. And I've realized even today, listening to people, I've left a couple out of here, things like frameworks and student feedback are probably a part of this as well, but they inform these four main chapters, which I now go through. And the structure I'm going to use here is I will present what I see as the problem or the challenges, you will all nod knowingly, and then I will say this is our crack at meeting that challenge or solving that problem. And then I will give you a task, and after the task, I will actually ask you to take your action point from that and bring it back to your base. So we do that for each of these four areas now. <coughs> okay, um, how's my red printing there? Is that visible? Yes. It's a terrible um, Okay. Observations, first of all. And the challenge with observations, here are some of them. The why is an obvious challenge. If there's no purpose to an observation, it's pretty much meaningless. If it's to, to, so something, you have to get observations done beyond the mandatory once a year DOS observation. If it's an observation for observation's sake, the feedback will be irrelevant because there won't be a purpose behind it. The when is a challenge. The when, uh, when does a DOS have time? Uh, when does a teacher trainer have time to go and do observations? If teachers are going to do the observations, who provides the cover? Uh, if the cover is going to be scheduled through peer observations, how do you keep the DOS's head from exploding by scheduling all of these? <laughs> Um, it's, it's another challenge. The where, I didn't put in the where because I thought it was pretty obvious. Yeah. Um, that was great. The idea that not everyone is accustomed to giving feedback and observing, and maybe they don't know what to say, and maybe it gets trapped in uh, personal <coughs> relationships or almost becomes self serving. Well, that was great. And there's no detailed feedback there. Uh, it's like magic. Uh, every teacher will have instinct. Instinct is a part of good teaching, but it's too easy to dismiss good teaching as instinct. Oh, they're just good at it. They have to try and articulate and dig a little bit deeper. The best teachers, the all good teachers, will think and reflect on what they're doing. So our crack at meeting these challenges, specializing, we specialize our observations into different types, whether that's uh, onboarding for a new teacher on the first day, whether it's orientation, more detailed onboarding a couple of weeks later, whether it's a buzz observation, whether it's an interventive observation, it's been an issue, whether it's a, it's a, it's a request-based observation for specific skills. We designed a template menu, uh, off-the-shelf observation templates ready to go with that peer windows where a teacher is encouraged to identify something they're good at and be observed and observe on that area. And to keep an ongoing cycle where observations are going on throughout the year. It's not this annual thing or this biannual thing. We at Atlantic have, uh, our provision here is to have an extra floor teacher always 
or Julie here will facilitate these kind of observations and cover class. Checklists is another idea I've seen quite recently, which I think is a very good idea at informing people who are not necessarily used to observing, and things like, for example, things you should see in class. The learners understood the instructions first time. The learners were using the target language. The observing will take, 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 take. So now it's your turn. Um, thinking about this checklist, a checklist of observations, whether it's a specific <coughs> observation on, on a specific area of teaching or a more general observation, I'd like you in 30 seconds, talk to your partner, if you don't like them, and uh, what items would you put on this checklist? Come up with one each. An item you would put on your checklist. 30 seconds. And the challenges around insets, um, and some of the challenges with implementing insets, 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 and making them uh, engaging and applicable. Uh, the challenge of when and the scheduling. People have families to go to in the evening. It's not always possible. When afternoon class finishes, if it's at lunchtime, do you provide the pizza? It's the key burning question. And we're kind of reluctant, on a philosophical level, to give the teachers that many carrots. Um, so pizza and zibili shouldn't necessarily be together. The sermon on the mount. The idea that a DOS or a teacher trainer imparts all of this wisdom, and everybody else must listen. It's not necessarily the case. Um, budget, there needs to be buy-in here. I don't necessarily have a solution, but the person financing the CPD has to have the buy-in, literally. Uh, the fear factor, some people just don't want to do incense. They wouldn't countenance the option. It, it's, it's just, uh, it's, not, it's not a feasible option for them. The hot air idea that things don't get captured, that things don't get acted on. It's just a lot of talk, but then people forget because they go back to class. And again, the, Wait, I've repeated myself there. Okay, so uh, some of our crack at meeting some of these challenges. We developed a dynamic calendar of insets with a shopping list uh, of items we wanted to hit and <coughs> to apply to do insets on these different areas. Group or inter individual delivery, a three-person inset, uh, 15 minutes each, can be as much value or more as one 45-minute session. Workshop format, that it's not just one person speaking, there is applicable and actionable takeaways from it. Ambassadors and publication, the idea that one person at an inset is responsible for recapping that and bringing it to colleagues or we publish it and share it with people who aren't there. Other platforms, we're not just depending on insects, there are other ways to, um, to express learnings and shared knowledge. Uh, okay, um, your turn, propose an inset, I won't put this to the room, but I would like some hands up. Propose an inset, an example, when you go back to your base, what should your next inset be about? Can I get some examples? My audience plants and work. <laughs> okay, um, I would look at an example internally we have where I think we need to look at audience and okay? <laughs> Next point action research. A difficult area to capture, a difficult area to articulate. And because there's so much information there, how do you access all of these websites we're members of? How do you access all of these reading resources? It looks like work and can't and teaching. It's a distraction from the day-to-day -day, uh, workings of the syllabus. You can't focus on this because you don't have time. You're focusing on the teaching. It seems like something extra and other, something that happens in a void. And again, when? When is the question? Some of the resolutions we looked at, presenting a, a library of sources in one place that people can read and adopt to. A learn, then do the learn again approach, to go fast and break things. To learn something, bring it into the classroom, try it out, then report back on your learnings. The alpha testers, we tend to forget the students and the people who test this, and it's easy to forget about that. And the shared learning, not necessarily an inset, maybe it's a blog, maybe it's, maybe it's a network where you can share your ideas and share your learnings from it. Your turn, your action point, I would like you to encourage to take from this, to think of action research, something you will do as an area of research when you go back to your classrooms. Why will you do it? 
How will you do it? And how will you share the knowledge when you've done it? Final point then, it's teamwork. And uh, final point, I will emphasize the word final. Teamwork, some of the problems here, some of the challenges, a lot of good talk goes on over coffee, good ideas that maybe go cold with the <coughs> coffee, they don't get shared, they don't get implemented. The good intentions go to waste. Um, again, there's the catch-up factor, the day-to-day -day admin, maybe you do not get a chance. Some of the ideas we looked at to resolve this, a questionnaire, when you go to an event to write down the action points or recommendations that you take from that event, which Atlantic people should be doing here today. Catalogued idea sharing in one place, whether that's on a blog or a WhatsApp group. Built-in reflection, we just added a box to our syllabus plan, things that work today that I'd like to share. Get uh, exchanges, get out of the building, elaborate and uh, cooperate with people in other schools to bring ideas back.